Hey guys, this is Mike Malpiti here, and I'm about to do another poetry performance. This is actually a poem I uh, wrote recently. It's called The Day Art Died, and, well, I hope you guys enjoy. So, here we go. Now, out in some average cookie-cutter town, Billy put his lips to the trumpet for the first time. He wanted to be a New Age Davis, a satchmo for a generation almost eluded of floor-tearing jazz and the majestic flow of bebop. In his mind, he began to replay all the Louis records his grandfather used to play. So armed strong as he held the horn to his lips, in hopes of replicating the flow of and cascade of notes and stabs, he blew, his lungs giving his heart a little shock and disappointment as groans and muffled wheezes fell from the bell to the floor. But Billy didn't stop there. You see, he knew that life wasn't always a crystal stair, and that in order to climb he had to practice, so that one day he could be listed among musical masters. So Billy went to school, joined the band for the basics, the marching band for the discipline, the private lessons for the repetition, and jazz band because he had to get funky, and two hours a personal practice minimum, so that his soul could be laced with music, and that his horn, much like his playing, would always, always be hot. And wouldn't you know it, flash forward a couple years into some teen drama-filled high school where Billy is a musical prodigy, hailed only by music teachers and fellow band geeks. As his skills progressed, he began to see himself less a musician, more of a warrior. His instrument, his sword, ready to cut through all the heartless robotic techno dubstep computerized rhythms. This world needs its artistic soul back, he exclaimed, a jazz-infused Beowulf staring down at a kiss one away music massacring Grendel. So at every concert, football game and pep rally, Billy would fire his now beautiful pitch-perfect notes through the air, no longer lazing about the ground but blazing through eardrums. He wanted the unanimous applause of his peers, exclaiming, damn it, this is true artistic achievement. So after every event, he would come to school, only to have his dreams slapped down, because you see, society decided that they wanted p watered down PG, PG gladiator matches over feel good and emotional art. So he would come to hear the loudspeaker, the principal shouting about his warriors, his soldiers, those athletes, praising them for the upteenth time. Every girl wooing and giggling over the cute quarterback, and then inevitably Billy's face hitting the locker, the metal bruising his skin. Oh, how weak he was, those beef-headed jocks thought. So now, head spinning, Billy tripped down the rabbit hole into a wonderland where somehow Kesha was good music. A natural evolution in the course of human history. A hypnopatic process that has everyone screaming out, Blah, 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 the party don't stop till I walk in. A twilight zone where somehow all you have to do is put little in front of your name and you're the best thing since Marvin Gaye, Hendrix, Elvis, hell, the Beatles. That somehow your lyrics will be a better musical contribution than anything that Beethoven, Mozart, or Bach ever composed on a sheet. So one day, Billy went home from school, didn't open his case, just slid his instrument to the back of his closet, his tool of emotion now slowly growing cold for the first time. He shut his door, turned on the radio, and laid in bed. Yo everyone, this is your man Ramiro here with Pebbles on Jammin' 94.5. About to hit you with that pit bull right here. You know, this man's gonna rock it down here at Summer Jam. You better be there. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Uno, dos, two, and two. Gonna undress you, and we're gonna go three, and three. Gonna undress me, and we're gonna go four, and, and. And as Billy listened to Pitbull count to four for about the hundredth time, he began to tap his fingers to the now catchy electronic beat. A disease invading his mind. I think I could like this, he thought. Tears started to form and roll down his face. I think I could like Big Brother's music. At the same moment, 
in another soap opera filled high school. A girl quits theater, so tired of being told that her dreams of Broadway, of stardom, and of happiness are outlandish. Tired of going home crying because all her friends are being called pussies and faggots and queers. So alas, poor girl, I wish we could say we knew her well, as she gave up the art of the stage for the art of drinking at sixteen. Her new role is school slut, a price of popularity. At the same time, out in distant land, poets started dropping their pens because they were so tired of being told that poetry is bullshit, no one likes it, it doesn't make sense, no one reads it, feelings are for the weak, and that they would rather just not have to die to be noticed, signing up for that dead poet society. Because let's face it, most poets might not even be known until they have literally hung themselves with their words. And all at the exact same stream of time, creating that perfect storm. Another school board bought its arts program to the chopping block. Money is tight, and their warriors, soldiers, their athletes, they need that transportation to the battlefield. Cause sports and athletes are just the only thing to be proud of in this town. So in this maelstrom, more pens were dropped. Cases were slammed shut, paints were spilled, and brushes were thrown away. As art began to die slowly this day, and Billy, never again, picked up his horn to play. Thank you guys. Hope you all enjoyed.